I'm Lauren George, and today I'm going to share with you my exact Zoom setup in detail for when I am Zooming for my virtual studio or continuing education workshops. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of equipment here, and how I have done my classes has changed a lot over the course of the last year, but this is what I have found to work best with everything that is going on right now or with how virtual classes are going right now. So let's start from the top and work our way down, shall we? So first of all, I have my ring light. It's turned off right now, but this is an absolute must if you want really high quality looking virtual classes. Lighting is a big deal. And what you can't see is I still have three other lights facing me right now that I then add my ring light to. So good lighting is important. Then I have my iPad. So you'll notice that the back of the iPad is facing me when I film. That's because the regular camera is much, much, much better than the selfie cam. So even though if you use the selfie cam, you can then see your participants, it's going to look a lot grainier and not as clear of a picture. So I'm logged into Zoom on my iPad. This is taking in my video and my audio into Zoom. I also have turn on original sound enabled. Now I'm gonna walk you through how to do those settings here in just a moment, but it's important to know that when you log into Zoom on your iPad, you're going to click turn on original sound. Now this little guy is a wide angle lens. As you can see, I film in a fairly small space. So in order for my camera to be able to get the entire room and my entire body, this wide angle lens is really, really important. This and my ring light are both just from Amazon, nothing crazy fancy. So then traveling down to my computer. My computer is also logged in to the same Zoom account. I don't have to log in as a different person. I'm logged into the exact same Zoom account, but my Zoom is muted, my camera is turned off, and my computer is muted. All this is doing is allowing me to see my participants while I'm teaching class, okay? So they're not getting any feedback from this computer. This is purely so I can see them since I can't see the screen on my iPad because it's facing the other direction. So important things, Zoom is muted, camera is turned off, and the computer is muted so you don't get any feedback. Then traveling to the other side here, I have my stereo system. So this stereo allows me to have a microphone. You'll see my Bluetooth mic here. So my Bluetooth mic is plugged into my stereo as well as my music. Now this stereo does have the capability of being on Bluetooth. However, I found that if I'm wearing the mic and it's on Bluetooth and I have my phone hooked up to Bluetooth, the, the stereo can get a little confused. So just to be on the safe side, I use the aux cord, but you can most definitely have your phone connected to your speaker via Bluetooth. So just know that that's an option. I just like to play it safe and there's no connectivity issues if I just have it plugged in. You just have to make sure that you have the correct aux cord for your phone. So my music is playing on my phone through, um, if I'm teaching virtually, my Muscle Mixes app. So it's playing through my phone into the stereo. Now this speaker, um, which is just from Walmart, again, not super crazy fancy, allows me to adjust the microphone and the volume of the music separately. So this is really key to finding a really nice balance between your voice and the music. But both the voice and the music are now coming through that speaker. I've enabled original sound on my iPad in Zoom, so that way the sound or the music doesn't dip out when I cue. And again, I'll further explain those settings here in just a moment. So I have my little headset microphone plugged into my stereo. 
and I am ready to teach class. Now, if you own a virtual studio and you also have an on-demand library and you would like to get double duty out of your classes, which don't we all, I totally understand. And so if you're going to save your Zoom classes to then upload to your virtual library later, I highly, highly suggest filming your class on a second or third or fourth, whatever device we're on, right? On a different device, because the Zoom recordings are never going to be as clear as if you record it straight to a phone or an iPad. So I have a little mini tripod right here because my actual big tripod is over there filming me right now. But normally I would have a tripod set up right next to my ring light. This records the entire class as I'm teaching it on Zoom. And then I just airdrop my video to my iPad, do any edits that I need to, and then upload it right to my virtual studio. So now anyone who missed my live class can take it on demand, but it's a much better recording than if I downloaded the Zoom video. So it does require a second device. So I use my newest iPhone to film the class and my old iPhone that is just essentially an iPod now is playing the music. So that one doesn't have service anymore. I just use it to play music and connect it to Wi-Fi. And then my good phone, which also has the best camera, is recording the class simultaneously while I am zooming. So now we're gonna hop into my iPad and I'm gonna teach you how to adjust all the settings so that you can optimize your sound quality for Zoom. Hello everyone, now I would like to take you through what settings you adjust in Zoom to maximize the sound quality in your workout videos. So open up a Zoom meeting and then click on audio settings. When you're inside audio settings, we'll want to have the speaker and the microphone at about mid range. Then what's really important is that when we come to suppress background noise, we will want to set it to low. So Zoom is designed to hone in on the human voice and minimize background noise, but it sees our music as background noise. So if we have this set to auto or high, then every time we cue, it's going to dip out our music as background noise. So we want that set to low. We also want to have the option show in meeting option to turn on original sound. So when we turn on original sound, that disables Zoom's that disables Zoom trying to dip out our music when we cue. And it makes Zoom pick up our music and our voice together and send that through the computer. We also want to disable echo cancellation. A lot of times that will mess with how our bass sounds if you have this turned on. And we also want to put it in high fidelity music mode. And this is for the highest quality music sound coming through the computer. So those are the main things that we need to adjust. So that way, once we are in our meeting, so I'm going to exit out here. We have the option to hit turn on original sound. So you only have to go in and adjust the settings that I showed you one time, but every time you do a new Zoom class, you'll have to hit turn on original sound. If you're on an iPad or a cell phone, in the top right hand corner, you'll see three little dots and those three little dots if you click on them, we'll give you the drop down option to then turn on original sound, but that has to be done every single time. And if you make those small adjustments, then your music and your voice will sound much better coming through Zoom.